Authorities say more than 633 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli fire in the West Bank since October 7th. The violence seems to be getting worse in recent months. Yeah, there's no question about it. It, it has surged since October the 7th. It was bad enough before, but there's no doubt it's, it has considerably increased, as has seizure of land uh, and the pressure being put on Palestinian villages uh, in the West Bank by Israeli settlers, uh, taking various different forms, the sort of thing that we saw in, in this town of, of Jeet on, on Thursday, uh, but all, also blocking of roads, blocking access to land, cutting down olive trees, destroying crops, uh, insults, you know, all, all kinds of pressure. So uh, over a 1,000 families have moved since the beginning of this year, have fled their homes effectively. Uh, and although we've heard the Israeli government and members of the Israeli government condemning what happened on, on Thursday. There's no doubt that for certain members of the government on the right, I'm thinking of uh, Ben Gvir and Smotrich in, in particular, uh, the aim, although they may not publicly support this sort of violence, the aim is to move the Palestinians off the land and for Israel to seize the territory on the West Bank and make it a permanent part of Israel. Uh, so there is that you know, apparent contradiction in what they're saying, but the reality is, without any doubt at all, that it is to seize as much land as possible. And we've seen with the, the, the pace of the, the settlements increasing over the last year or so, that that is enjoying some success. There have been attempts by uh, the Western world, by the United Nations, by the United States, by the European Union, by the United Kingdom, amongst others, to put pressure on Israel by imposing sanctions on, on the leaders of the settlers and on individual settlements as well. But as we can see from what's been happening over the last few days, it doesn't seem to be having very much effect. And we're on day two of ceasefire talks being held in Doha. Has there been any hopeful progress on that front? Well, not that, not that we know of, but I mean, that's not, I suppose, not, not, not unusual. We probably won't hear of any progress that's made or has not been made until the talks are finally over. Uh, but we did hear from John Kirby, uh, the national security spokesperson for the White House, on Thursday evening, who said that there had been a promising start made, at least, to the talks, and that the, the, the talks weren't really so much about the framework itself, which he said, by and large, had been agreed upon, but about the manner in which it should be implemented. That's probably a, a very optimistic spin on, on what is happening, because at the moment there doesn't seem to be very, very much give uh, on either the part of the, Israel or of Hamas. Hamas accuses Israel of adding new demands to the agreement that was reached in, in May. Israel said that's not the case at all. Now he's referring, Hamas is referring to the Philadelphia Corridor, uh, which is that strip of land which runs along the southern border uh, of Gaza with Egypt, uh, and also the return uh, of uh, the people from the north of Gaza freely, without obstruction, without checks by the Israeli armed forces, uh, as part of the agreement. Israel says that that's nothing new. Uh, but the reality is that Israel is imposing new, new, new demands and Hamas too. All right, our chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons, thank you very much indeed for your analysis.